Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to more Endless Scrap Mechanic. So in today's video, we are going to be having more fun with gears. Now, as you can see behind me here, I have the thing that we checked out in the last video. Now, this is a three-speed drive system that uses a drive shaft with universal joints that spins gears at the back here. So I made this gear system, I put a frame on the top of it, and I turned it into a really cool truck. Now, it's a really awesome build. In case you guys did miss this first gear video, then I'm going to put a link up in the top right corner there, guys. You guys can check out this build in further detail, but I did have one problem with it, and this was pointed out down in the comments, that with the drive system in the back here, as you can see, there's only a solid axle drive system. So what that means is, as this gear in the back right here turns, these wheels on either side will get turned at the exact same speed. Now, to illustrate this problem, I have created a little diagram Graham. So imagine you're in a truck and you want to make a right turn. So of course you're going to proceed along, you're going to make your right turn, but you'll notice that as you complete the right turn, your inside wheel gets to the end of the turn before your outside wheel. And that is because the outside wheel, of course, has to travel a greater distance than that inside one. So of course, if you continue progressing on with the turn, the next wheel will finally get there. And that is why vehicles have a differential, so that as you're making a turn, your wheels can change speeds and get to the destination at the same time. So the solution to the speed problem with the solid axle is to introduce what is known as a differential. And as you can see right here, I have created one and I think this is a really close replica to what a differential actually looks like. Now when you look at these gears, it is kind of difficult to tell exactly what happens in the movements to allow each wheel to move independently from each other at different speeds. Now I have created a really nice colored version of this that breaks it down one piece at a time. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how a differential works. So the differential starts with what is known as a pinion gear painted here in green. Now the pinion gear takes the rotational force from the drive shaft and introduces it into the differential. Now it's spinning in the wrong direction though, so we introduce what is known as a ring gear. Now the ring gear is starting to spin in the right direction, but as you can see, it rotates around the axle of the right wheel and doesn't directly influence the rotational forces of either axle or those wheels. So in order to do that, we add what is known as a spider gear. Now the spider gear rotates along with the ring gear and that is the foundation of what is allowing each wheel to speed up and slow down independently from one another. Now obviously you can't do that without the final piece which is known as the axle gears or the side gears. So these axle gears move in correspondence with the spider gear. So as you're conducting a turn, if one wheel needs more rotational speed than the other one, then the spider gear will start to turn and allow for that independent movement between the two of them. Now this is easily depicted by stopping one of the wheels. So as you can see here, once the left wheel is completely stopped, you can see that the spider gear starts to rotate around that left axle gear. And so basically what's happening is we are getting full speed on the right wheel because it needs to make up for the fact that the left one isn't moving anymore. And on, on the other side, you can see if we stop the right wheel, then what happens is the left wheel starts to spin and you can see that spider gear there rotating around the entire axle gear on the right side. And of course you can see the ring gear moving around as well. And there's the pinion gear in the back giving us that rotation. So having each gear system painted a different color really helps you see the differential in action. So what I'm going to do is hop into the seat here and we're going to use this rainbow style differential just so we can see a close look of what those gears are doing. Now, a quick explanation of this vehicle actually is this is a very simple gear driven engine. So I have three different speeds here. One is for first gear, the other one's second gear, and we also have a reverse gear as well. So this is pretty simple in drive in comparison to the truck that I did in the 
last episode. But here we go. I'm going to press the one key and we should get a nice bit of movement here. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, when we drive in a straight line, the differential is giving an equal amount of power to the left and right wheel. So the drive is going and it's not turning whatsoever. You can see that yellow gear right there, the spider gear, it is stationary and not moving. But as soon as I turn the wheels to the left, you can see now that that spider gear is starting to rotate. So of course that is allowing each wheel to turn independently at different speeds. Now I can up the gear to a faster gear. There we go. Now we're cruising along much faster. You can see we have the stationary spider gear right now, but as soon as we start turning, you can see that uh, when we're going really fast like this, it spins even faster than before. And it's doing a lot right now to try and compensate for those different wheel speeds. And it's it's such an amazing feat of engineering and I'm really happy with the way this did turn out in Scrap Mechanic. So not only does the differential work in forward, it also works in reverse as well. You can see we are going backwards and it is still going to turn that spider gear right there. But now I did just remember something. So I did a lot of research on the differential. I do believe this is called an open standard differential, I believe, or something like that. Um, but one thing I did notice is that some of these differentials actually does feature a secondary spider gear. So I figured why not try and add a secondary one right now. All right, so I think I've got all of the parts necessary to build this next gear. So I believe I have to put the suspension right here, just like so. Now I'm going to add another pipe piece just like that. Okay, so now in the middle here, I actually have an invisible block. Uh, so I just put that there so that I can have all of these components connected together by bearings. Uh, so that way it just keeps it a little more stable and together. But I'm going to be able to leave all three of those bearings there like so. Now all I have to do is add, I believe it's just the gear, uh, which should be pretty easy. Now I'm just going to drop this off the lift here and hopefully I might be able to put it there. Okay, no, not like that. So I did just remember that there is the glitch weld tool. So I brought the glitch weld tool into this world and I'm wondering if it's going to be able to help us out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these top three gear teeth this color right there. Now I've got a bearing set up, I believe, right there on the bottom and I have all three of my bearings there as well. So I should be able to get rid of those just like so. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to grab the secondary spider gear and I'm going to weld it just like so. Now I do believe I should be able to bring those back just like that. Okay, there we go. And I guess all I have to do now is paint them back to the blue. All right, so I've got the secondary spider gear welded on. It's almost ready to go. Now I've got the bearing on the other side, but I need to put one more bearing just like that. And now I should be able to put this invisible block right here. And as you can see, it's going to connect all four of those bearings, uh, which is really nice and satisfying. So there we go. We've got both of the spider gears. Now I wonder, is that going to help it or is it going to make it worse? Now I almost forgot to get rid of the glitch welder right here. Now, like I mentioned, better or worse, I don't know. So let's find out here. I'm going to press one. Oh, that's right. I forgot it was a glow gear. All right, let's try that again. I'm going to press one. Here we go. Okay, okay. So now we have the two spider gears. They seem to be working all right and giving us power to both wheels equally. Now let's see what happens if we turn left. Oh yeah, look at that. Both of those gears are turning. Wow. That looks so cool. Now this is like an even better uh, differential, I guess. Maybe it's just more of a stable version of the single differential with the one spider gear, but I'm gonna paint it like that. And I think I'm actually going to save this as a new version. All right, I spawned it off of the lift and I seem to be having a weird problem. What is, why is, I guess I'm getting some suspension glitch for some reason. It, it wasn't happening before. As soon as I saved it though, it started giving us a suspension glitch. What? All right, I just spawned a new one and it seems to be okay now. It's not broken anymore. I'm gonna test it one more time. Okay, yeah, no more suspension glitch. What just happened? Okay, um, I don't know what just happened, but it seems that this is in working order. Again, now let's try it at a faster speed here. It seems like it might be more reliable. Now these gears, the gears tend to lock up. Look at that, you can see here they have locked up and it doesn't really seem like there's much reason why. So sometimes you have to take the gear out and put it back in again. But I, I, I would think that having the double spider gear is probably making this worse.
Now, as fun as it is to use a very colorful version of this differential, I do have the unpainted version that I have converted from just a frame to a fully functioning truck. So essentially what I've done is I have taken this exact frame right here with the gears and the differential and I created an entire truck over the top of it. So if you look underneath it here, you can see the actual frame there with the differential in the back is there. Everything is hooked up and connected together and this is a working truck. Now again, I'm going to remind you guys that if you do build with these gears as a drive system, I highly suggest that you use this ultra light polygon mod pack because it allows for the creation to look cool, but it adds almost no weight whatsoever. And that's what I did with this truck right here. Pretty much everything you see is the ultra light polygons. Now I'm going to hop into the driver's seat of this truck here, and then we're going to take it into a terrain world so we can try a little bit of off-roading with this thing it does have some pretty decent suspension in the front here so let's put this thing into first gear we are going to get those rear wheels rolling okay there we go we can see underneath it here all of the gears and stuff and i gotta say this looks absolutely awesome in scrap mechanic to have functioning gears like this and a real differential i feel like i've almost created a replica of what a differential actually is in the real world in scrap mechanic now let's try and do a turn though we're gonna start turning to the left and there goes the differential is starting to rotate around and as you can see like that the truck looks absolutely awesome as well while it's rolling now obviously this is kind of slow here so why don't we put it into second gear okay there we go we're going well a little bit faster and okay I think the gears have jammed up now you do have to remember with these gear vehicles that they don't really go super fast because I mean the game really isn't designed to have this these are all really awesome mods that really kind of work as best as they can but in this case here I am extremely satisfied with the way they are performing in this build I think it's really satisfying that we can do this either way so why don't we bring this truck over to a terrain map we're gonna try and take a little bit of hills I think this truck has better clearance than the larger truck from the last video uh, but I guess we'll find out all right I don't know about you guys but I think it's time for an explosion break sometimes you know you go too long in scrap mechanic without seeing an awesome explosion and I want to see what the fronts of these trucks look like if I blow up the front here and just so I can see what the drive system is going to look like once it's exploded so here we go let's satisfy our explosion need real fast oh yeah there we go okay wow okay <laughs> That was quite devastating. You can see there's hardly anything left with that drive system right there. Now, this one is the cooler drive system, though. So I wonder, am I going to be able to blow up enough of this creation right here? Oh my god. Okay, yeah. Wow. Whoa. How did that fall over? Okay, but it seems like, yeah, there is the drive system right here. Oh man, it's even blown out some of the gears. Okay, okay. Back to regular programming. So, I've got the truck spawned in in this canyon world right here. This is a good one for testing these gear-powered vehicles. So now, here we go. Let's put it into first here, get spinning up a little bit. Okay, there we go. This is actually pretty slow, so why don't we just put it right into second. And you know what? I'm wondering if I can maybe speed that up. You know, I, I feel like I might be able to, but I guess it's probably better that I don't. Uh, now, you can see down here that this large gear is extremely close to the ground, and I'm pretty sure that no matter what... Okay, whoa, hold on, kick it into reverse. Okay, we stick it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I did not realize that that was a dead end. Now, look at this. It seems like reverse is actually faster than second gear. Okay, I think... I think I might have to actually change the speeds on this thing. All right, so I've got the system set up for what should be a faster speed. So here we go. Let's just jam it right into second gear. Oh, man, there we go. Look at that. We're even kicking up some dirt. That's how fast this thing is going. All right, perfect. So now we are cruising along in our truck, and I realize I honestly can't take any off-road terrain because, like I mentioned, that gear is there. Now we can try anyway. Oh, my God. Okay, this is another... How many little cliff sides are there? Okay, here we go. Drive it over... Come on. Oh, no way. Now, I bet you if we did have front wheel drive, this would not be an issue. So I think I know what my next project is going to be with these gears. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is create a four wheel drive system that uses these gears. Now, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to use the differentials. Maybe I could try and do like a front differential and a rear differential with the drive mechanism. It might be possible. Uh, it'd be something crazy to pull off, that's for sure. But this is a really awesome truck. It seems to be working really, really well. Now, I'm going to try and take it down into this little hole here. Now, this is probably a terrible idea, but let's see if we have enough clearance 
and enough speed even to get up and out. Oh man, come on, let's go. Come on, gears. We've got this, and wow, okay, it actually worked. The gear truck, oh, it got us out. It, we are stalling, I, I guess we're stalling out here. It doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, it seems like every now and then this car does stall out pretty badly. Now, I'm not too sure if that's just because the gears, they might have their own sets of issues when they're interacting with each other, uh, but sometimes you can get it kicked up again and started. Now, I guess sometimes you just gotta reset it on the lift, but here we go, let's try one final challenge. Look at this hill right here. We are cruising down right now. Now this is, of course, the easy part. I'm gonna have to try and go up. Okay, here we go. We are now going up the slope. The gears are working. It seems to be good so far. We're creeping up ever so slightly. Oh, we just got a little speed boost. Okay, here we go. We are up the first turn. Now I think this second part of the hill is even steeper. Man, this is awesome. Look at those gears working so hard. The differential is doing a great job. Okay, we're almost there. I wonder, I, I was going to think of putting it down into first gear, but that's probably a bad idea. Okay, come on. Keep crawling up. Oh, we made it. Wow. This is actually pretty impressive. Now, I figure though we might as well go all the way up to the top here. This is one other steep hill that we might be able to conquer. Oh man, now this is actually a great spot to get an awesome view of these gears at work. Look at that. Okay, here we go. We're at the top now. And I was thinking of maybe just kind of doing a little bit of off-road on the way down. Okay, now don't lose traction. Okay, we're at the top. We have conquered this mountain. Now, I guess the only thing left to do is try and drive off the side of the cliff. Here we go. Oh boy. Okay, this is not going very well. Oh, there's a really nice view of all of the gears. And there you go. That is exactly how you drive a gear-driven differential truck in Scrap Mechanic. Now, honestly, guys, I don't know about you, but that was actually one of the craziest things I've ever pulled off. I can't believe we are still driving. The gears are doing a really good job right now. They haven't gummed up. They haven't gotten stuck. We were able to go up and down through all of those hills, and this is just absolutely awesome. So that is going to be the video for today, guys. I did hope you enjoyed these awesome gear creations. The differential was a lot of fun to make. It took me uh, many hours to get it to work properly and to have it make sense in my mind. Uh, so if you guys did enjoy this video or the build, then let me know by hitting that like button. And if you guys want to tune in for some more Endless Scrap Mechanic, then consider subscribing to the channel and maybe even turning on some notifications so you can get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. So guys, Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll be seeing you in the next one, so bye for now.